All right. Hi, everybody. Uh, I don't want to do this, but we should talk person to person for just one minute. I don't mean I don't want to talk to you, but I get it. You want to see the code. I do too. I can relate, but we still need to talk about one quick thing. Uh, we will be discussing the service container in this video. And I want to talk to you because we're starting to creep into m more complex territory that you don't mm, that you don't necessarily need to build yourself. And yet I still want you to understand the, the basic premise and the basic concept. So really, if you think about it, all of the things we've been building over the last 10 episodes or so, like uh, even validation, but our router, uh, our database class, this container, we're going to add an app class. Once you start using a framework like Symfony or Laravel, they will provide these things for you for free. That's why it's called a framework. It gives you everything you need. So even though I'm showing you how to build some of these things in real life, most of the time you're not really going to maintain these yourself. You're going to use off the shelf uh, tools that are, to be honest, way, way better. You shouldn't, in most cases, you shouldn't build your own. And yet I'm still showing you because again, I want you to have a general understanding of what's going on here rather than it being some kind of a uh, black box that you don't really understand. Okay, so just keep that in mind. I'm going to show you how to build a container in this lesson and we can make it as complicated or as simple as we want. But still, if it feels a little too much or a little too overwhelming, just remember in the future, you won't be building this yourself. So if you just want to skip over it even, nobody's going to judge you. Okay, let's get going. I'm going to switch into PHP Storm. And if I go into, for example, my controller, notes, destroy action, you will remember in a bunch of places we have code just like this, where we need to instantiate our database class in order to execute some SQL. Okay, so keep in mind that each time we instantiate database, we also have to build up the necessary configuration to pass to the constructor. And you'll remember we set that configuration right here. But yeah, my point is it's just a little annoying that I have to redo this every single time I want to perform a database query. So we have it here, here, we have it here, and then, uh, yeah, we have it there again. It's just a waste. And as you can imagine, for real applications, this will constantly be a concern, not just for a database class, but for everything. You will constantly have objects that require a lot of configuration or a lot of, um, a lot of tweaking in order to instantiate. You might need a certain public key or a private token, or you'll have to instantiate a dependency of a dependency to pass it in here and it gets very time consuming. So instead, it would be nice if I could just do this a single time and then throw it in a, in a container of sorts, like just throw it in there, and then if I need it, I can take it out of the container. That's what we're gonna build in this video. So I keep using this word container. That sounds like a pretty good name for our class. So I will do that now. And I'll call it container, and PHP Storm will uh, auto-create the class for me. And then I did say we'll need to add things to the container and then remove them from the container. And in fact, I really like this super simple five-year-old terminology. However, again, just in the spirit of future frameworks you might use, why don't we change these to bind, to bind something into the container or add, and then resolve to grab things out of the container. So a little more complex, but also, again, immediately familiar once you graduate to a framework like Laravel. Okay, so what's the next step? All right, so let's do this. I'd like some kind of playground. So I'm going to create a new file, and we will call it bootstrap.php. And then our index file will require it. So for now, hmm, why don't we do it right here? Require base path bootstrap.php. Okay, and we're probably going to keep that file too, but now I have a little playground where I can uh, tinker and, and, and figure out how I want to interact with this container. So I know I want to say new container, all right, and that automatically gets imported. And then next, I want to bind things in to the container. And then let's see, if I want to work with our database instance, I could use a path to it using the namespace. So I could bind that key to a function that is responsible for building up the database object. That's what we're doing here. So I'm associating this little builder function with a string called core database. 
Okay, so if I were to go up to any place where we manually did it, like right here, let's switch back and paste it in here. Just like so. All right, and then we will return that from our function. Okay, and real quick, you'll notice that it's gray because I haven't set up the method signature on the container class, but we'll do that in just a minute. Okay, so now I can see that we have a string, which would be like an identifier or a key for this binding. And then we have a function that is responsible for building up the object. It's almost like a little factory function. Okay, so let's, uh, let's do this. Let's open up a split, go into my container class so that you can see these side by side. And we'll say, accept some kind of key. All right, and then the second argument is our function here. Call it whatever you want. Some people make it super generic like this. I don't really love that, but you know, if you wanna call it your, your, your builder or your factory function or your resolver, whatever you want here. Okay, so now when we bind something into the container, think about it, we need to store it somewhere. We need to save it, we need to cache it, just like with the router lesson. So I'm gonna take mostly the same approach where I will have a field here called bindings. And then when I call this bind method, I will push to this array, almost identical to the router class. Okay, so I might do something like this. This bindings, uh, this will be an associative array. I'll give it the key and I will make that equal to our resolver. Okay, so now if you think about it, the bindings array contains one item at this point. The key for that item is core slash database, and the value associated with that item is a function that will build up the database class however is appropriate for your project, as you see here. All right, next within our resolve method, we want to do the opposite, right? We wanna take the object out of the container. And how would we do that? Well, we will probably need to call or trigger this function and then return the result, right? Okay, so let's do that now. Resolve should accept a key. And that way I could say, for example, container resolve core database. And then this method would look into our bindings array and say, all right, do we have anything called core slash database? Oh yeah, we do. So let's find the resolver or the function associated with it, call it, that will trigger this code and then return the result. So in effect, we would have a database instance fully built up and configured, uh, ready to go when we call this method here. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so we might say if array key exists, look for this key inside of the bindings array. In that case, we're good to go. So I could say, well, the resolver is this bindings key. And then I want to call that function. And there's a couple ways to do this, but why don't we stick with call user func. This will accept the name of our function and it, well, calls it. And then finally, we will return the result. Okay, but now what about the situation where you try to resolve something that is not bound uh, within the container? Something like that. What should happen in this case? Okay, well, maybe we should reverse it. What if we do our guarding at the beginning? And I say, well, if not exists within the uh, bindings, then yeah, we don't, we don't know what to do. We can't proceed. We have no idea what you want here. And in those situations, we can throw an exception. Something like this, throw new exception. This is provided by PHP, and this is what you should do in exceptional uh, situations. And then later, you can either catch those and respond to them however you need to, or you can just let them happen. Now, when we create an exception, we can give it a reason. So in this case, what is our reason? Well, we couldn't find a matching binding. So maybe, how about that? No matching binding found for your key. And yeah, once again, I can hit option enter in PHP storm and switch that to string interpolation if you like that, just a little better. Otherwise, if we get to this point, we're good to go. So I can remove this, then reformat. And yeah, I think we are off to the races. Okay. So we know that we are requiring our bootstrap class here. So why don't we just play around with this? Let's comment this out and then die and dump the database class to see if it's working properly. So if I switch to Firefox, there we go. We now have our database instance fully configured and ready to go, which is pretty cool. And yeah, also if I were to instead uh, resolve something that is not in the container, well, remember we'd throw a new exception, right? 
So let's see if that works and what that looks like. I give it a refresh and there we go, uncaught exception. So notice when you throw an exception, you do have the option of catching it and then responding in some way, uh, maybe a, a more graceful way. But, but I don't wanna touch on that just yet. For now, this is fine. We throw an exception to let us know, hmm, there was no binding for this. We didn't know what to do, so we just aborted entirely. Okay, cool. So I think this is looking good, at least for our first pass. But now, well, we have a new problem. Have a look. If I go into my destroy controller, well, how do I grab that container, right? Like, it, would I be in the exact same boat again where I basically have to build this up over and over? So now I have to do this just to grab my database? No, definitely not. It would defeat the entire purpose. Every time you need to use the container, you have to instantiate it. Why would you do that? Definitely not. But it does show that we need some place to build up our container and then have access to it from anywhere in the application. Okay, so to do that, I'm gonna build up an app class. So just come along for the ride for a minute. I'm gonna call it app.php. And I'm gonna add a static method here called setContainer. A quick refresher, just in case you forgot, a static method is one that can be called without having to first instantiate um, an object. So for example, with this method being static, I can then say app set container, just like that. If I did not have static here, yeah, I've, of course I would have to build up a new instance of app and then I could say, uh, excuse me, app set container. Okay, so let's keep it as static for now because this is going to be super helpful. Now, it's going to accept our container and then I will store it. So why don't we create a static property called container and then I will uh, initialize it. Static container equals container. All right, so now when I call this method, I give it my container object and all it does is it saves it on this property. It's the only thing it does right now. All right, next I need to get the container so I can interact with it, right? So why don't we do this? Let's copy this method and yeah, if you want, you could call it get. I guess that would be consistent and it's very common, but I don't really love using the get prefix if I don't have to. Why don't we just name it container? And all this is going to do is it will return uh, this value here. It's going to return the container to me. Okay, so now from anywhere in my application, I have this app class. And if I say app container, I get access to the container and I can then interact with it. Um, and, and this is an example of a singleton, but again, jargon, terminology, you don't need to worry about it uh, right now. Okay, so let's give this a shot. And actually real quick, can't forget to add the namespace here. All right, so I will come back to Bootstrap. So here we've instantiated our container. We've added our first binding. And don't forget in real life, you'll do this dozens of times potentially. And now I want to set the container uh, like so, and I will pass that in. And do note that I have imported app at the top automatically by PHPStorm. All right, so I know we're covering a lot here. That's why we had that quick conversation at the beginning of the video. If you need to watch this two times, watch it three times, just to make sure you fully grok and understand what's going on here. Okay, I think we're ready to try this out. So I'm gonna go back to that destroy action on my controller where we were manually building up our database class and I will comment it out. And instead I wanna say app container, give me the container. And then I want to, well, let's see what we want to do. On my container class, I want to resolve my database instance. So I say resolve, and then we give it a path to the class or the key that I want to resolve out of the container. And once again, I'm just going to die and dump the DB class to make sure that everything's working the way we'd expect. All right, and then let's go to notes. And I'm sorry, we don't even have a note here. Let's add one super quick. We view it, we click delete, that will hit our destroy controller, and then we should die and dump the database object, and everything is working. Very, very cool. Okay, so now if we did everything correctly, all of this stuff here can now be replaced with our container. App container resolve our database. Pretty cool. And in fact, if you want, I'll show you a little tip. 
Notice how I am manually writing out the path to our database class. But as it turns out, if you just reference the class name itself and then colon colon class, that will uh, basically translate to a string of the full namespace path to the class. And if you even want to inline it, you could do um, this. And that way you get some auto-completion, some IntelliSense, uh, you might prefer that. It's still going to work the same. Okay, cool. But now I want to focus on some creature comforts. It would be nice if I didn't have to say app, container, resolve, database. Wouldn't it be cool if I could just say like app, resolve, and then it just works. And real quick, by the way, I would almost always import this. So I will bring that back. But yeah, wouldn't it be cool if I could just say app resolve and then the app class would delegate to the container class and give me what I need. Okay. The problem is right now, the resolve method is defined on container uh, right here and not on app. But think about it. You're in charge. Is there anything preventing you from just having a static method here called resolve? And then you give it the key? No. And if you're instead thinking, well, there's nothing preventing you, but you're adding a bunch of duplication. No, I'm really not. I'm not reproducing everything I have here. I'm just deferring, I'm delegating. So the app class can say, okay, well, let's grab our container and then I will call resolve and pass through the key. You see how it's just kind of passing it through? App is just, uh, it's adding a, an affordance here. Yeah, you can call resolve. And if you do, I'm just gonna delegate it over to the container class. It just makes for a more, I don't know, friendly and intuitive API to access it directly off of the app class. Okay, so with that in mind, maybe we should do the exact same thing for bind. Bind, and then of course I will need a resolver. Okay, cool, and again, those delegate. Okay, and then of course I want to return the result here. Okay, so now if I come back to our destroy controller, yeah, I, ideally, hopefully, this will just work. Let's give it a shot. View the node, click delete, and everything works just like it did before, but now we are resolving things out of the container, which means, yeah, I can I can switch over to any place I was referencing this before and swap out that instantiation with a reference to uh, our container, as you see here. So let's do that. Paste this one in as well. Is there one here? Yes, there is. There we go. All right, so we're about done here. But finally, to wrap up some quick closing thoughts, yeah, just keep in mind that the container we've built here is incredibly simple on purpose to demonstrate the general pattern. But yeah, once you graduate to a dedicated service container that, for example, Laravel provides, you will find that it does so much more. It has support for uh, singletons where you get the same instance no matter how many times you resolve it. And that would be very useful in the example of our database class here, by the way. It also has support for things like automatic dependency resolution, which is a fancy term that just means there are situations where you wouldn't even need to specify how to build up an object. The container could possibly do it for you automatically uh, to use a made up word there. And yeah, basically it will look at the class and then it will look at the dependencies on the constructor. And then don't forget each dependency could have its own dependency and those subdependencies could have their own dependencies. And yeah, the container could recursively go through each of those and build it all up on the fly. And it's really cool, but far beyond the scope of a beginner uh, series. So yeah, this is the container that we're gonna stick with for now. And uh, hopefully it was useful to you. Finally, our app class provided a way to basically make this container singleton available anywhere within our application. All right, so please do ask your questions below. Otherwise, onward to the next lesson, as always.